Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to take a look at the difference between real numbers and imaginary numbers with some examples as to why we actually need imaginary numbers. So here we're saying that real numbers can be found on the number line and on the number line only. So we have this horizontal line which represents all the real numbers that exist. So here we have labeled the negative integers, zero, and positive integers, but of course numbers can exist between those numbers as well. Here the number negative three can be found on the, uh, the number line, the number zero, but when we have like the square root of two, that is also found on the number line, and 10 over nine is also found on the number line. Any real number can be found on the number line. Imaginary numbers cannot be found on the real number line. For example, these dots here are representations of imaginary numbers. They're not on the number line, so they're not real numbers, they're imaginary numbers. So, how do we classify imaginary numbers and how do we deal with them? Well, notice here that we have what we call the real axis. This is actually a representation of the number line. And then we have a vertical axis, which represents the imaginary part of all the numbers. Again, if a dot is found away from the number line, it cannot be a real number. It's an imaginary number. But imaginary numbers can have real parts to them. For example, a plus bi is what we call an imaginary number that has a real part and an imaginary part. If we drop a line straight down from this dot, which of course is not on the number line, that's why it's not a real number, if we drop it straight down to the horizontal line, to the number line, we see that it hits the number line at value a. If we drop a horizontal line from the, from the dot to the vertical axis, let's say that's a distance b away from the origin. So this number then is called a plus b times i. bi is the imaginary part, a is the real part of the number. Here's some examples of that. Let's say we have a dot right here, which is two units away from the origin, this is zero, this is one, this is two, on the number line, and it's one unit away from the number line in the positive direction of the imaginary axis, then we can see that the real part is two and the imaginary part is one times i or simply i. So this number here, this dot represents the number two plus i, the real part, two units away from the origin on the real axis, and i is one unit away from the origin on the imaginary axis. And that's how we represent it. Here's another dot representing a different imaginary number. Again, it's two units to the right on the real axis, but three units down below to in the negative direction on the imaginary axis. So this is two minus three i. So that's a visual representation or a dot representation of an imaginary number. Later on, we'll have some additional videos explaining all about how to deal with imaginary numbers, but for now, it's sufficient to realize there's real numbers which, which exist on the number line, imaginary numbers which are not on the number line. Here's some examples why we need both in algebra. Here is a, a graphical representation of a quadratic equation. Notice that the quadratic equation crosses the x-axis at two points when x equals zero and when x equals two. So therefore, it has two real roots. Real roots are found when x equals zero and x equals two. But what if we have a quadratic equation whose visual representation or graphical representation looks like this? Notice that the line here, or the curve, does not cross the x-axis. Therefore, there's no real roots. But there are what we call imaginary roots. What if we flip this, this graph over like this and we draw the mirror image of this graph here the graph is represented by the equation y equals x squared plus one, and we'll explain later in videos what that really means. But essentially, if we now take that graphical representation of the quadratic equation, y equals x squared plus one, and we simply have a mirror image of that, we flip it over, notice that that imaginary image crosses the x-axis at negative one and positive one. And therefore we say that it has two imaginary roots, not real ones, to imaginary roots at plus i and minus i. We simply take the numbers where the imaginary line crosses the x-axis and we multiply it times i. So one times i, that's i, that's one of the imaginary roots. Negative one times i gives us negative i, that's the other imaginary root. So there's actually reasons why we need to deal with imaginary roots and therefore we need to deal with imaginary numbers
as well as real ones. And that's how we can tell the difference between real numbers and imaginary numbers.